Have you ever wondered what a chemical formula is? How is it different from a chemical compound? And how do you write a chemical formula anyway? Hi, I'm Dr. Ramon and I'll be discussing these three questions today. To begin with, any meaningful discussion on chemical formulas and chemical compounds will have to find its roots in the periodic table. This is a section of the periodic table. The periodic table has groups of elements. We are going to be focusing on the first two groups and the last six groups, which are called the representative elements. What you want to understand is that all of these elements, the first two and the last five here, excluding the noble gases, tend to become stable by having a complete valence shell, as what we have learned in chemical bonding. And in order to do that, they either give off or accept electrons, as many of them as they need, to be able to achieve what is called a noble gas electron configuration, which is also known as the octet rule. Their simple rule of thumb is that group 1 elements typically want to form a 1 plus charge, which means that it, it gives away one electron. Group two elements typically want to give away two electrons to achieve a plus two charge. Group three would typically give away three electrons and have a charge of three plus. Group four elements neither wants to give away or accept electrons, and so it typically doesn't form charges. Group 15 will typically want to accept three electrons to become stable and therefore have a charge of three minus. Group 16 would typically accept two electrons and become two minus. And then group 17 would typically accept one to become one minus. So for example, if you have beryllium, beryllium is in group two right over here, it would typically have a two plus charge in order to achieve noble gas electron configuration. Now, what you need to understand is that the charge consists of two things. The two is what you call the magnitude, magnitude, while the plus here represents the sign. The magnitude represents the number of electrons that are involved, either given away or accepted. The sign represents whether it's gonna be given away or accepted. A plus means given off, a minus means accepted. So over here on the right side, let's say we we have nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 15. It would typically accept three electrons and become three minus in charge. Now these are what you would call monatomic ions. When you have a charge, you have an ion. So those are called monatomic ions for mono, meaning one, atom. It's a single atom ion. Now I want to differentiate for you a polyatomic ion. Okay, so what's the difference between the two? Well, polyatomic means you have more than one. Poly means more than one. Example of that would be OH minus, okay, or OH1 minus. Now, and by the way, for the charge, if the magnitude is 1, you may or may not place it in. That's okay. Now, what does this mean? This means that you have two atoms, oxygen, typically having a charge of 2 minus, and hydrogen, typically having a charge of 1 plus. And if you combine their charges, they end up to have a net charge of 1 minus. This whole group will act like a single unit. They tend to be inseparable. And that's when you call them a polyatomic ion. Now, I'm going to be using the abbreviation to refer to polyatomic ions as PAI. So anytime you see PAI, what I mean there is polyatomic ion. So there's a list of polyatomic ions that you're going to be provided that you can actually use for assessments. Eventually, you're going to have to memorize those if you are going to be moving on to higher chemistry. Let me just give you another example. You can have C2O4, 2 minus. This is an oxalate ion. And so what are these subscripts referring to? The charges are what you call superscripts. There would be numbers that are smaller and below the atoms. What are those? Those are called subscripts. And what are those? Those represent the number of atoms of this particular element that are involved in your group. 